George Russell is a Formula 1 Grand Prix winner, an F2 champion and an F3 champion. He's been one of the best young single-seater drivers over the past decade and cemented himself as one of the top drivers in Formula 1. But the funny thing about George Russell's Formula 1 career is that, at one point during his come-up, Formula 1 was not the motorsport he had his sights set on. Oh no folks, because during the Mercedes driver's rise through the ranks, another German manufacturer had its sights set on signing the young Brit. And if George had put that pen to paper, it would have changed the recent history of Formula 1 completely. In today's video, we're gonna look at the contract that was offered to George Russell that almost saw him miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime from Mercedes F1. My name is Intern, I talk wheel, and this is George Russell's BMW contract offer revisited. DTM? Indeed. You see folks, you know DTM today as basically Formula 1 with GT3 cars on mostly German tracks, and back then it was also kind of the same thing. Except the cars weren't GT3s, they were Class 1 rocket ships. Class 1 cars were some of the fastest closed cockpit cars on the planet, and back in the day, the series was supported by a single-seater championship known as the Formula 3 European Championship. In turn, what's that? Well, worry not. If you're brand new to Formula 1 and its junior series ladder, then I wouldn't expect you to know about this series because it no longer exists. In 2019, it merged with what was known back then as GP3 to create what we now know as Formula 3. However, back then, F3 Euros was its own European championship with Formula 3 cars that young drivers would use to climb the Formula 1 ladder. Enter George Russell. George Russell managed to get a seat in the F3 Euro Championship in 2015 after his endeavors in 2014. These included a P4 finish in the Formula Renault 2.0 Alps Championship, as well as competing in two rounds of the Euro Cup Formula Renault 2.0 Championship, winning the final race at Jerez as a guest driver. Russell also won the BRDC F4 title after beating teammate Arjun Maini by a mere 3 points. This title guaranteed our boy George a GP3 test at Abu Dhabi that December. As if his year couldn't get any better, he took home the £100,000 prize that was McLaren's Autosport BRDC award. George in 2015 would contest the F3 Euro season with Carlin and would follow along as the support series with DTM in 2015 as part of scheduling. Russell rejected an offer from Mercedes team boss Toto Wolff, and to be honest with you, this was a rather odd decision seeing that this was 2015. Mercedes had just come off of a double championship winning season in F1 where they won all but three Grand Prix. Russell stated that his reason for rejecting Mercedes was that the deal would require him to drive for Mook Motorsports in F3. George preferred to drive for Carlin as it was a British team. Russell would perform well in his F3 Euro season, winning a race and scoring two more podiums to bag a P6 finish in the standings. Being in a DTM support series meant that DTM owners firmly had their eyes on the championship as a means of snatching up young talent into their teams. This was something that teams had already done that year. When Antonio Giovinazzi held the lead of the championship that year with only three rounds left, he was called up by Audi to replace two-time DTM champion Timo Schneider, who was banned for a weekend for an on-track incident. Lucas Auer and Tom Blomquist were also examples of F3 talent that went straight to DTM instead of continuing on the open wheel ladder. Well, BMW had been watching Russell like a hawk that year, and when the opportunity presented itself, they handed George a contract offer. According to George, the offer was quite enticing for him at the time. He wasn't sure if he had the budget to continue on the Formula 1 junior ladder and saw DTM as the next best thing. He was being offered a seat in a top European series where he'd earn proper money as opposed to remaining in junior series where payment wasn't really a thing and the money was really going to the teams. George was offered a test with BMW in December of 2015 at Jerez. At this test, he would be up against a driver I mentioned earlier, Tom Blomquist. Blomquist finished second in F3 Euros in 2014 and took an offer from BMW to become a DTM driver in 2015. 
he'd go on to win a race that year, becoming BMW's youngest DTM winner of all time. This was the future that awaited George. Seeing Blomquist in the garage was like looking into a portal into the future. BMW were confident they made the right decision when a then 16-year-old Russell went not only faster than Blomquist during the test, but also faster than the Mercedes and Audi drivers who were also testing that day. As one can imagine, BMW were dead set on signing the Brit and sent him a lucrative offer just three days later. Soon after, a man called George, and this phone call would be the turning point in George Russell's entire racing career. His name was Gwen Lagrue. What makes Gwen so important is the fact that during Russell's test, an ex-BMW turned Mercedes engineer saw his performance and encouraged Mercedes to snatch him up before he signed his life away to BMW. Then came the call from Gwen, who headed Mercedes's young driver program while also serving as Esteban Ocon's manager. Gwen told George that he wanted him on the Mercedes program. The offer included George doing another season of F3 but this time with high tech, seeing that that team had Merck links. Mercedes would also put him in their simulator to evaluate his ability. If Russell performed well enough, his reward would be officially joining the Mercedes driver program in 2017. However, if he were to sign with BMW, this contract offer would no longer exist. George had both options laid in front of him. A guaranteed BMW seat in a top series with a proper salary fitting of a racing driver or a gamble with high tech in F3 that, if successful, sees him join the team that's dominating Formula 1, Mercedes. George chose the latter, cooked with high tech and became a Mercedes young driver in 2017. From there, he became an F2 champion signed a Formula 1 contract with Williams, got a race seat with Mercedes at the 2020 Sakir Grand Prix, and then got the call to join the Mercedes F1 team in 2022, where he remains to this day. George Russell is a pole and race winner in Formula 1, but what would have become of him had he taken that BMW seat? He'd have been a DTM driver in 2017 as per the contract, which wouldn't have been the best year to do so, as they finished third of three manufacturers in the standings and their highest placed team in the team's championship was P4. BMW didn't win a single title in the years Russell would have been there. Given DTM's switch to GT3 machinery in 2021, there's a high chance Russell would have been a GT3 driver, floating around different championships and probably competing for BMW at races like the Spa, Daytona, and Nürburgring 24 hours. Had he taken the decision and stayed loyal to them to this day, he'd probably be in their hypercar competing in the World Endurance or IMSA Championship, though that car has only amassed one win so far in its lifespan in both series. Speaking of one win, that's how many George has scored for Mercedes since joining, heavily due to their fall off in the ground effect era that seen Ferrari, and more importantly Red Bull, outdo them still doesn't change the fact that it got his foot in the door of Formula 1 thanks to the move and is now recognized as one of the best F1 drivers on the planet and is now in a situation where come 2025, he'll be leading the team following Lewis Hamilton's departure. Unless they sign Max, I don't know. His status as one of the best in the world is something that would have been difficult to prove in the machinery BMW had to offer. It's safe to say that George taking the option to bet on his talent with high-tech in F3 ended up being the decision he can thank for becoming a star in Grand Prix racing and a Grand Prix race winner. My name is Intern, I talk wheel, and thanks for watching.